All right, guys, next three spots on our principles of programming. Um, no shoulders once a week, no barbell once a week, benchmark workout once a week. So let's talk about shoulders. Shoulders are finicky. If we're not careful as coaches and programmers, it's very, very easy to overdo it on our shoulders. There's two things that kind of really get abused and assaulted in our sport and our fitness program. Um, one can be shoulders and the other is our legs. The good thing about our legs is our legs are built to withstand a lot more abuse and assault than our upper body. That's not to say we need to um, not take care of our lower half or be a, stay above parallel once a week, but um, shoulders can be very, very finicky. And if we don't identify it early when someone has an issue, it can linger. And if it lingers, again, if we go back to our number one, um, uh, number one rule, compliance, if someone's hurt, they're not gonna come in. And if they feel like they're not getting better, they're not gonna come in. So we don't wanna do shoulders one time a week. The only kind of catch that if you find yourself in a programming corner and you can't write your way out of it, wall balls can be okay because they're really not that heavily loaded and your legs are doing the majority of the work of that movement. So you can get away with having wall balls on a day that you weren't supposed to have shoulders. And burpees are also kind of the same thing. Um, the, the horizontal press is a lot more, it tends to be safer and more stable than the overhead loading of a shoulder. So you can get away with wall balls and burpees if you need to, but it's always better to take a step back adjust something else other in the week in order to um, have a one day per week of no shoulders. Now, simply coming to the gym and taking care of ourselves is going to put us at a higher risk of injury than just simply sitting on the sofa. If you sit on the sofa every single day, you're not gonna have a shoulder injury, but you're gonna have to pay for that down the road. But by coming into the gym, we automatically put ourselves at risk of potentially having an injury or something that can bother us. So uh, I wanna share with you guys our shoulder um, protocol that we use It's six weeks to get someone back to full health. What it does is it doesn't, it allows them to not be discouraged. So if someone comes to us and they go, ah, oh, my shoulder's been bugging me for the last couple of weeks and I can't quite seem to get it to go away, all they're looking for is a plan. They trust in you as their coach and their programmer to um, get them back to full health so that way they can participate in the thing that they love to do. So if you take a look at the screen here, I'm going to uh, go over the six week protocol that we use to get people um, back to health. The first week you can see, so we have the stuff at the top that they can do and should do and stuff at the bottom um, that they should not be doing. Now, if you look at week one, we have eliminated almost every single um, shoulder thing to do. The reason for that is we have to let the inflammation go down in order for us to then start to slowly reintroduce things to build that strength and stability up back in the shoulder. Um, the other thing is it, we're not going to be able to identify why someone's shoulder is bothering them. Um, that's not our job. We don't have the ability to do that, but it can typically be down to either a lack of strength um, or a lack of, uh, lack of flexibility. Flexibility being, can they physically put their, their shoulder in that position? And then mobility being, do they have the strength to properly engage in those positions? So week one, don't do. Don't do any overhead pressing, so nothing overhead. Don't do any overhead pulling, which means no hanging from a pull-up bar. No toes to bar pull-ups, muscle-ups, or rope climbs. No horizontal pressing. No push-ups, no bench press, no dips. No horizontal pulling. No ring rows, no bent rows, um, no hand over hand rope pulls, no rowing on a machine for that week, and no front rack position either. We are completely eliminating um, anything that could cause any inflammation or discomfort to that shoulder. Um, what we are going to have them do, and we're big proponents of the crossover symmetry bands, um, is have them do the activation before they train each day and the recovery protocol after they train each day. So it's gonna be up to you as a good coach and programmer to find workouts and modifications that allow the athlete to still get a good workout in, even though we're eliminating all of those movements. It's tricky, you're gonna lean a lot on bikes um, and you're gonna lean a lot on running, squatting. Um, we're also not pulling from the ground so we can't do any power clean. So it's tricky, but the first week is very, very important in order to let the inflammation go down to that shoulder. Week two, we're gonna keep 
the same protocol for week one with the crossover symmetry. Um, and then we're gonna engage the lat pull through movement during the daily um, training on the crossover symmetry bands. And then also the iron scat protocol twice per week after training. Now we're gonna start to develop a little bit of the strength and stability back into the shoulder. And we're also gonna allow them to add back in the front rack position, bent over rows, rowing on a machine, and hand over hand pull. So it's really that first week that's gonna test your ability to modify workouts for your athletes. We start to slowly add back stuff um, in that. But again, we're still not pulling from the ground. So that means anything in that front rack is coming out of a rack. Week three, same protocol going. We're just adding the activation plus protocol before training each day. So again, we're using these bands to activate, strengthen, and stabilize these shoulder joints um, as we go along. And then we're adding back in ring rows, push-ups, still not burpees, push-ups, wall balls, and bench press. So again, we've added a few things back in that the athlete can do, but if you notice, we're still avoiding overhead loading of the shoulder. Week four, same protocol we're doing to start, and we're adding back in uh, strict pull-ups, strict press, strict toes to bar, rope climbs, and you can do Olympic pulls or deadlifts. So um, this allows us to now hang from a bar, but we are still not kipping, we're not swinging. Everything we're doing is a strict movement in order to continue to slowly turn the dial to reintroduce stuff for the shoulder. Week five, same protocol that we're doing with crossover symmetry bands. We're adding in push press, handstand push-ups, kipping pull-ups, not butterfly, sumo deadlift high pulls, and clean. So now we're starting to get back to almost full health of, of going through a full range of motion throughout. And then week six, when we get to week six, no restrictions. This we found to be extremely, extremely useful and um, effective in helping people overcome these shoulder issues that can happen. So now we say all that to say the one time a week of no shoulders, it's worth taking the time to figure that out in order to help prevent an athlete from having to go through a six week protocol in order to get back to full health. So one time a week, no shoulders. Thanks for diving in with that one for me. Um, one time a week, no barbell. The barbell may be the greatest training tool that we have on the planet. It's evenly balanced. There is nothing you're gonna find that's gonna allow you to move more weight over a further distance as fast as a barbell can. However, much like we talked about the intervals earlier, that intensity does come with a price and it can fry our central nervous system. And it can be a thing that really just kind of beats us up, um, especially for people who are new to it. It can really kind of do some damage, but it's an incredibly great training tool. We do want to give ourselves a break from it one time per week at least to allow ourselves to just take a breath and not have to worry about moving that barbell. And then lastly, uh, for this section, benchmark workout once a week. Now benchmark can also be um, set as a repeat workout. The importance is we want to track progress. Can't have that live forever. Track progress um, by doing our workouts. So again, if we look through this through the lens of um, wanting our people to show up every single day, they need to be able to see progress. The easiest way to do that is have them do a thing that they've done before and do it better. So we wanna make sure that we're doing that benchmark or a repeat workout one time per week. The other reason is it gets buy-in. When people see that progress, they start to believe in the program more and much like we've talked about earlier, belief in the program drives compliance. If you have compliance and belief in a program, there's a very, very good chance that your program is going to be effective. And that's what we're looking for. Now, let's say you run a repeat workout and very few people hit a PR or do better than they did previously. You can identify a gap in your programming. We're all human. We are all gonna have these unconscious biases of when we program workouts and we're not gonna realize it sometimes until we go to retest the workout and the class does worse. I remember at my old gym uh, in Baltimore when I was programming there, um, I looked at two weeks of programming and the gym hadn't done a thruster in two weeks of programming. 
And I just find that, I found that kind of funny that I had that type of a gap in my ability to develop a programming. It probably comes from the fact that I personally don't like doing thrusters. So this is an opportunity for us to really identify um, gaps in our programming as well. So it's good for the athletes to get buy-in and track their progress. It's also good for us as programmers to take a look at the stuff that we've been putting out to the athletes to identify gaps in programming, some things that we can be doing better. Or if everyone hits a PR on that workout, that's a good checkbox that there's something that we're doing right. So um, no shoulders once per week. If you do have an athlete that has a little bit of a shoulder bug, use that shoulder protocol, that six week recovery protocol. Um, we found a lot of success with it across the board. No barbell one time a week. It may be the greatest training tool that's ever been created, um, but we also uh, need to back away from it once per week. And then that benchmark, like we just said, give people a chance to smash some PR, celebrate their successes, and it also gives you a chance to identify the strengths and weaknesses in your programming. Um, thanks a lot, guys. Let's keep going.